All right, so no huge model drops this week, but Sam Altman did just back a Neuralink competitor. And on top of that, he's been beefing with Elon Musk on Twitter. We also got an open source version of Google's playable world model, Genie 3. And the first humanoid robot to fold laundry completely on its own. Let's get into it. All right, so this is pretty insane. Sam Altman is now co-founding a brain-computer interface startup called Merge Labs, basically a Neuralink rival that wants to build high-bandwidth brain implants to merge humans with AI. There's not a ton of details just yet, but Merge Labs is reportedly raising about $250 million at an $850 million valuation, with a big chunk expected to come from OpenAI's ventures arm. Now, this comes just days after Elon and Sam got into it on X. You've probably already seen this, but Elon put out a tweet threatening to sue Apple over antitrust violations, claiming they're making it impossible for any AI company besides OpenAI to reach number one on the App Store. Now, not only did X's Community Notes feature quickly prove this is simply not true, but Altman fired back with his own response. He wrote, This is a remarkable claim given what I have heard alleged that Elon does to manipulate X to benefit himself and his own companies, and harm his competitors and people he doesn't like. So yeah, as you can imagine, this started a full-on brawl. Well, a virtual one. Musk fired back angry. You got 3 million views on your BS post, you liar. Far more than I have received on many of mine, despite me having 50 times your follower count. Altman replied, skill issue, or bots. Then followed up with this, will you sign an affidavit that you have never directed changes to the X algorithm in a way that has hurt your competitors or helped your own companies? I will apologize if so. What's funny is that a user actually tied Grok in this post, asking who's right. And surprisingly, it took Sam Altman's side, even calling Elon a hypocrite. From there, things started to get a little dirty. Elon even resorted to bringing up old allegations involving Altman's sister. And to be honest, I don't really want to get into it. The beef kind of died here anyways. But yeah, that was something. You really never know what you're going to see on the internet these days. Anyway, while all that was going on, OpenAI's reasoning model quietly picked up a gold medal at this year's International Olympiad in Informatics, one of the world's top programming competitions. It actually placed sixth when ranked with humans and first when ranked with other AIs. That's now a gold medal for OpenAI in both the IOI and IMO in just the last few weeks. Absolutely insane. And speaking of OpenAI, their latest model GPT-5 managed to earn badges in Pokemon Red nearly three times faster than O3. So this is actually a big deal because it's a clear indication that GPT-5 can plan, adapt, and optimize strategies in a dynamic, complex environment far more efficiently than its predecessors. Obviously, Pokemon isn't an exact replica of the real world, but it does suggest that GPT-5 may be better suited for complex, real-world applications that require the same kind of long-term reasoning. Now, over at Anthropic, Claude for Sonnet just got a massive upgrade, a 1 million token context window. That's enough to feed it entire novels, a year's worth of your group chat history, or as they put it here, 75,000 lines of code. Google's Gemini also got an upgrade this week. Not Gemini 3, but Gemini Memory. Gemini can now learn from your past conversations over time, leading to more natural and relevant responses. They've even added a temporary chat feature, similar to what ChatGPT already offers. And now, here's where things get wild. Remember that incredible world model Google showed off last week, Genie 3? Well, just a week later, we already have an open source version. This is Matrix Game 2.0, the first open source, real time, long sequence interactive world model built by Skywork AI. It runs at 25 frames per second, stays interactive for minutes at a time, and again, it's fully open source. But now, here's where things get even more wild. In a recent interview, DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis hinted that in the future, AI might not just generate these worlds, but actually control them directly. Think of it like dropping an AI agent inside one of these simulated environments and letting it learn, plan, and act in real time. Almost like training it in a living, interactive sandbox. Just check this out. 
How do you think people will use Genie? Is it like, is the intent for us to just like leverage it to help make Gemini and some of our other like robotics initiatives like better and scale that up? Or like, do you think there's actually like, a, obviously like maybe the, I could see people playing with it in yeah. some cases, but do you think there's any like... Yeah, it's so it's so exciting in multiple dimensions, which is the um, uh, one, of course, is we're already using it for our own training. So we have a, a, a games playing agent called Simmer, simulated agent that uh, I, I can out of the box sort of take the controls and play a, an existing computer game, right? Mm. In some cases, uh, well, in some cases, not so well. Uh, but actually, what's interesting here is that um, you can put that Simmer agent into Genie 3. So you've got basically one AI playing in the mind of another AI. It's, it's pretty crazy to think about. So, you know, Simmer is deciding what actions to take and what you can give it a goal, like, you know, go and find the key in the room. Um, and then uh, it will sort of send out commands as if it's playing a normal computer game. But actually, at the other end, is Genie 3 uh, generating the world on the fly. So there's one AI generating the world and there's another AI um, uh, inside of it. So it could be really useful for, uh, of course, for, for creating sort of unlimited training data. Um, so I can imagine that being very useful for things like robotics, um, but just training our general AGI systems. Um, but also, of course, it's, it's got a lot of potential in an applied sense too, uh, for the future of interactive entertainment. I, I'm, I've got many ideas that you wouldn't be surprised of what types of next generation incredible games can be made. Um, and then, uh, and maybe some new type of entertainment that we haven't really thought of before that's somewhere between film and game, some new, uh, new genre of entertainment. Um, and then finally, maybe the most interesting thing from my point of view as a scientist is, what does this actually tell us about the real world and mm -hmm. physics and maybe things like simulation theory? You know, one has to, when you're working on this like late at night and you're sort of generating these entire worlds and you're sort of thinking through how this technology is working, um, you have to sort of also consider, and I've always been doing that in my career of like, well, what's going on in the real world? What's the nature of reality? And actually that's the thing that's driven me through my whole career to, to build AI as, a, as this amazing tool for science. And uh, I think things like VO3, our video model, and uh, video audio model, and Genie3 um, really uh, tell us something about the nature of reality if we, if we look at it with a slightly different lens. So yeah, Demis is already thinking 10 steps ahead of everyone else, like always. And I can't wait to see a working version of this. I've said this before, but it really feels like we're building a simulation. And I mean, if we are, who's to say we aren't already in one? We might literally be building a simulation inside a simulation. Finally, to wrap up this week's AI recap, we've got a new demo from Figure Robotics. Figure claims this is the first time a fully autonomous humanoid robot has ever folded laundry, start to finish, with no human in the loop. The robot is running Figure's Helix Vision Language Action Model, the same core system it uses for warehouse work. But here, it learned laundry folding with just 500 hours of new data, no special programming. While folding laundry might sound simple, for robotics, it's a nightmare. Soft fabrics, constantly changing shapes, and the need for precise, dexterous finger control. Helix has to detect edges, smooth surfaces, and recover from slips in real time, all without a human ever stepping in. So from AI agents exploring simulated worlds, to humanoid robots taking on real-world chores, the gap between digital intelligence and physical or real-world capability is closing fast. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. If you did, please feel free to drop a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.